Today I'm reading from the book, Continue uh, Conversationally Speaking. I'm on the chapter called Active Listening. This book is written by Alan Gardner, and I'm in the park in, um, in Brooklyn, um, and I was in the sunshine today, and I want to read this now. Um, Active listening is a remarkable way of responding that encourages others to continue speaking while enabling you to be certain you understand what they're saying. To effectively use this skill, you need to first grasp what happens when someone speaks to you. Interpersonal communication begins intrapersonally. Someone has a feeling or idea to express to you. In order to convey his message, you must put it into first verbal and nonverbal codes that you'll understand. What codes he selects, what words and gestures and tone of voice he uses to convey his meaning will be determined by his purpose, the situation, and his relationship with you, as well as by such factors as his age, status, education, cultural background, and emotional state. The process of translating mental ideas and feelings into messages is called encoding. Suppose, for example, that you are playing a Barbara Streisand tape for a friend. He's enjoying the music, but wants it softer. You can't read his mind. So to let you know, he encodes his feelings and shouts above the tape, turn it down. Once delivered, the message po passes through a channel, normally the airspace between you or a telephone wire. Others, other sounds in the channel will often distort the message. In this example, Barbara Streisand's loud singing may produce quite a bit of distortion and the message your ears pick up may be very different from what was sent. So there's a picture here of the message going out to the receiver and in between there's interference. Further distortion inevitably occurs when you decode the message, assigning meaning to the verbal, nonverbal signs you've received. Out of the approximately 40,000 impulses your toes, ears, eyes, hands, and the rest of you receive each second, you can only pick out a few to focus your attention on. What you pick is heavily influenced by such factors as your expectations, needs, beliefs, interests, attitudes, experiences, and knowledge. According to Sathri, Olson, and Whitney in Let's Talk, it has been said that we hear half of what is said, we listen to half of that, and we remember half of that. We'll tend to hear what we want to hear and see what we want to see. As Fritz Perls, the founder of the Gestalt Therapy Movement, put, puts it, the pictures of the world do not enter us automatically, but selectively. We don't see what we don't see, we look for. Search, scan for something. We don't hear all the words. We don't hear all the sounds of the world. We listen. For this reason, the message intended by the sender is often far different from the one you created from the <clears throat> available signs. Your impression often doesn't come close to equaling the other person's intention. In our example, if you correctly interp interpreted the sender's message, you would conclude that only he, that he, only that he wanted the music turned lower, but you interpreted it to mean I'm angry at you, you might well respond inappropriately. Messages uh, message are often decoded incorrectly with neither party ever knowing that there has been a misunderstanding. This is why active listening is so important. Instead of assuming that your impressions are correct and responding accordingly, with the skill you'll be able to make, with this skill you'll be able to make certain you've decoded accurately. And it shows here that with the interference, the message being received, turn it down. With the interference, the person is taking back, you're angry at me. You're angry at me, you might say in this example, is that right? No, the sender would probably reply, I just want the music turned lower. Active listening then tells, then is telling the sender what his message means to, us, to you. It enables the sender to know you're listening while enabling you to have your impression either confirmed or clarified. Here are some examples of active listening. One, Chloe, I'll never get a transfer. Marie, you're feeling really, really frustrated. Active listening, Chloe, yeah, every place I go, they tell me to leave a resume and they never call. Marie, you think you're getting the runaround active listening. Chloe, exactly. If they haven't got any jobs, why don't they just say so? Number two example. Husband, I don't want you to play cards tonight. Wife, you don't like me having fun without you. Active listening. Husband, it's not that. It's just that I don't want to be alone tonight. Three, Sue Ellen. I want to go home. Bert, you're not enjoying yourself. Active listening. Sue Ellen, right. Maybe if the tour guide quit pushing us around every five minutes, it would be better. Bert, you'd rather he gave us some more free time. Sue Ellen, yes, I think I'll tell him so right now. For example, Donna, we never go anyplace. Joe, you're bored and want to take a trip. Active listening, Donna. Yeah, for years we've said we'd go see the we'd go see the country when we retired. Now let's go do it. Five. Active listening once in my relationship with a female friend. The third time we got together, while strolling hand in hand, I told her how much I look forward to taking her skiing. Come winter, she looked away and replied, "Well, maybe we won't still know each other by then." I decoded her message to mean she didn't want to go 
on seeing me, but rather than accepting that impressionist fact and turning cold toward her, in which case she might have concluded I, I was rejecting her, I used active listening. Are you saying you don't want to see me anymore? I asked. Her reply was a smile and a hug said, no, silly. That's just my roundabout saying that I want you to spend more time with me. When and how to use active listening. Active listening is especially useful in two general situations. One, when you're not certain you understand what the other person means. Two, when an important or emotionally charged message is being sent. Senders will often cue you to the fact that they are saying something particularly significant by A, directly referring to it as worthy of notice, and then quotes an example. The first thing you need to do is, or it's vital for you to understand that, B, repeating a message several times, and C, placing po a point first or last. D, pursuing, pausing, or waiting for eye contact before speaking. E, preceding the message with ah. Uh, F, speaking more loudly or softly than usual. And G, speaking more slowly than usual. When you employ active listening, concentrate on reflecting the feelings others express, the content or both, depending upon what, what you think you may have misunderstood and what you consider more, most important. To arrive at your statement, silently ask yourself, what is he feeling? What message is she, she trying to convey? In, in feeding back your tentative conclusion, you will usually begin with the word you, and you may wish to prompt a direct reply by adding at the end, am I right? And the way, if your conclusion was right, you'll know it. And if it wasn't, the sender's response will usually speak directly to the misunderstanding. Active listening demonstrates your acceptance. If you were to find yourself in each of the problems, in each of these problem situation, situations, which of these three responses do you think would be most helpful? One, a child you know cuts her finger and begins to cry, A. That's not such a very big cut. B, stop crying, it doesn't hurt that bad. C, your finger really hurts a lot. Second example, a close friend confides, my boss said I'm not working fast enough and he'll fire me if I don't shape up. A, I guess you'll better put your nose to the grindstone. B, you shouldn't let him get you down. You can always get another job. C, sounds like your job means a lot to you and you'd hate to lose it. Three, a neighbor laments, well, it looks like I've exhausted all my alternatives. I'm going to have to invite my mother to move in with me. A, just look at it this way. Your mom raised you and now you're paying her back. B, I'll bet you secretly pleased to be living with her again. And C, you're worried about the effect this is going to have on your life. First two responses to each example tell others how they should feel or what they should do or they express approval or disapproval, sympathy or reassurance. Responses like these seldom help or satisfy those who confide in you instead. These generally lead them to conclude that you don't want to get involved, that you don't take their feelings seriously, or that you have little faith in their ability to solve their own problems. The third response, the active listening response, would probably have quite another result. Being encouraged to express fully and fully their emotional reactions helps others to become more relaxed and calm around you. Having their problems understood and reflected but left with them shows them you have faith in their ability to arrive at their own solutions. Also being heard, understood, and accepted without criticism by you will inevitably lead others to feel more positive about themselves, warmer toward you, and more invested in hearing what you have to say. Many women and men who read Conversationally Speaking report major improvements in their relationships once they stop judging and begin active listening. A Santa Monica clothing salesman named Aaron related this experience. When my son used to tell me he had received a bad grade, I'd ask, why didn't you study harder? When my wife would say she'd been late for work, I'd reply, you should have left earlier. Once I recall, my baby girl told me with tears in her eyes that she was afraid of the dark. I replied, you shouldn't be. There's nothing to be afraid of. My advice was obvious, and all the criticizing and moralizing was causing my family to confide in me less and less. Last week, my wife mentioned she had gotten into an argument with her sister. Normally, I would have given her advice like, you've only got one sister, so you better apologize. Instead, I replied, sounds like you're upset. Each time she spoke, I made it a point to only active listen, even though I was dying to give her advice. I was thrilled. She shared thoughts and feelings with me that I never knew she had. I almost always felt, I, I almost felt like I was learning about a stranger, and she seemed delighted by the chance to express herself without being cut off by some glib comment from me. Active listening keeps your conversation going. Active listening is an excellent way of encouraging others to talk to you. The interest you show will frequently lead people to expand their, upon their com lead people to expand upon their comments. The fact that you aren't critical of their thoughts and feelings will help them to feel comfortable and to self-discipline, self-disclose more and in great depth than they otherwise might. Active listening also helps you solve the age-old problem of not having anything to say. If you're frequently tongue-tied, you're probably trying to pay attention to two conversations at once, the one you're having with the other person and the one you're having with yourself. The latter typically consists mostly of worries about your performance. Paradoxically, the more you listen to the worries, the less able, you're able, the less able you are to do well. 
Active listening encourages you to set aside this trouble, some self-talk to get involved with what the others are relating and to experience deeply what they're feeling. You'll be surprised to find that you, that when you concentrate on your conversational partners, rather than on yourself, you'll be far, it'll be, it will be far easier for you to think of things to say. And since you've paid them such close attention, it will be, still be more likely that they'll want to hear it. Common mistakes in active listening, parroting. Many men and women new to active listening find themselves merely rewarding, rewording the remarks of others. For example, Larry, I'm having a great time. Ted, you're enjoying yourself. Larry, the roller coaster is my favorite ride. Ted, you like the roller coaster best. Larry, I hope we don't have to go now. Ted, you want to stay longer. Parroting responses like these give the illusion of understanding. Real active listening involves stating your conclusion as to the meaning behind what the other person has said. Ignoring or downplaying feelings. Wife. So there was parroting. Okay, ignoring or downplaying feelings. Wife. Number one. Wife, I feel like I'm on the endless treadmill taking care of the kids all day. Husband, those kids certainly keep you busy. Two. Margaret, I'm depressed. Janet, you're a little under the weather. Many people ignore or lessen the intensity of the emotions they hear when they use active listening. It's as though they think feelings that they don't acknowledge will go away. Exactly the opposite is correct. Failure to acknowledge the validity and intensity of the emotions of others tends to increase their intensity, while demonstrating understanding by active listening tends to have a cathartic effect. Active listening to nonverbal messages. Nonverbal messages are often even more difficult than verbal messages to interpret correctly. This is because the same nonverbal expressions, such as a smile or crossed arms, can be indicative of several widely different emotions. For this reason, it is helpful to check often. Often, it is often helpful to check out your interpretations through this three-step process. One, tell the other person what she saw her do and heard her say that leads you to your conclusion. Two, tell her what meaning you may have attached to her actions. And three, ask if your conclusion is correct. For example, one, when I asked you to go with me to my macrame class, you quietly said, sounds like fun, and then changed the topic. I don't think you really want to go, am I right? Two, you just said that you like your job, but you frowned. Would it be right to say that there are places that pluses and minuses to what you're doing? Three, you keep yawning, and I wonder if you wouldn't rather go home. If, you're drawn, if you've drawn no conclusion, you might simply want to state what you've observed and then ask the other person for an explanation. For instance, ever since I met you last month, you've only wanted to get together for lunch, never for dinner or show. I'm curious to know why that is. When I mentioned skiing in Vermont just now, a little grin came over your face. I'd love to know what you were thinking. One of the many occasions on which I found active listening to nonverbal messages particularly important was when a college friend named Angie suddenly stopped returning my hellos. After this went on for almost a week, I said to her, Angie, I've been smiling and saying hello to you for five days straight, and you haven't responded at all. I think I've done something to offend you. Am I right? Angie replied, no, not at all. Alan, it's just that I've been going nuts getting ready to defend my PhD thesis and haven't been able to think about anything else. Getting others to paraphrase your remarks. If you want to be certain that someone understands your message, ask her to use active listening by saying, I just want you to listen and tell me what you hear me say. Don't give me your, op your opinion or try to solve my problem. I just want to know that you understand me. It's the emotionally charged atmosphere of argument. In the emotionally charged atmosphere of argument, it's easy to misinterpret messages. And so active listening is especially valuable. Tell the other person so we'll be certain we understand each other. Let's do something new. After each time I, you speak, I'll tell you what I heard you say before replying. If I haven't gotten what you said right, I'll try again until I do. And you do the same for me, okay? Then begin the process by speaking and asking the other person what he heard you say or by paying attention. Active listening and then asking if you were accurate. And that is chapter three of the book, Conversationally Speaking by Alan Garner.